Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Do you have a stash of pattern paper that you thought you would use for cards? Maybe it's 15 or 20 years old. Maybe it's too big, too busy, the wrong colors. Maybe some of that pattern paper is ugly or out of date. <laughs> um, don't worry, I do too. So today I want to show you seven different ways to use some of the, the pattern paper in our stash and just make it a little more user friendly for cards. For example, this paper here, the pattern is just too big. If I were to cut it down to an A2 size panel, you would lose all of the floral elements. And then don't forget books. If you're like me, you've got a uh, just a handful of books that you saved because you thought you would tear out the pages and either alter the books or use those pages for cards. I hardly ever do. But today I grabbed a handful of stencils and we're going to go to town and just alter some of these pattern papers and just make them a little more user friendly for cards. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this first paper is that large floral that I showed you. You probably have some of these in there in your stash. They're great for 12 by 12 scrapbook pages, but it's the wrong scale for cards. So you can see my Twisted Sunshine stencil here has a much smaller scale pattern. So I wanted to emboss it with silver embossing powder and just add pattern on top of it and then we'll alter it a little bit more. So the first thing I did was cut that pattern paper down into a strip. I'm going to hit it with my embossing tool. Just It's an anti-static powder tool. That'll keep um, any extra embossing powder from sticking in between. And then in this case, I do not want to use pixie spray on the back of my stencil because that can leave a sticky residue, probably not much and it would come off, but if you're going to emboss that it, it might pick up stray powder. So I just taped my stencil down and then I've got my Versamark pad and I do keep a little foam pad on the bottom. I just Velcro it on the bottom so that I can do exactly this with it. Um, I'm just pouncing the Versamark ink on to the paper through the stencil. And I'm not, I'm not trying to blend it. I, I'm just pouncing it through. If you try to, um, to move that around rather than, if, if you try to go through the normal blending motion, I guess is what I'm saying you can twist and accidentally move the paper because that ink is pretty sticky. So once I've got the ink pounced through there, I'm going to grab my silver embossing powder and I'm <laughs> pretty sure this embossing powder is 20 years old too. Um, you can see it's a little bit clunky, but it works just fine. So don't worry about that. Your embossing powders can basically live forever. Um, unless you get them to contaminate it. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle it on to my background here. And already you can see that we've got more pattern and that just brings the scale down. So I'm going to heat it real quick with my heat gun. And once I've got the whole background embossed, it um, is safe to touch now. Um, but the colors are still a little bit it's still a lot going on there. So I'm going to grab this dark red ink pad here and a cottontail blending brush. These are nice for covering big areas. They're really soft and dense. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and ink blend some of this ink onto the background. Um, I chose this color because it'll go with the other elements that I'm going to end up finishing this card with, but obviously you can come in with any colors that you want. And by using the silver embossing powder, I'm going to have a nice, pretty, shimmery finish and more texture. And again, I've just brought that scale down and made it a little more user friendly. Um, I'll go ahead and clean off any of the extra ink from the uh, that's on top of that silver embossing powder. And it'll also lighten up some of the red just a little bit too there. But you see how the pattern paper is now scaled down. When I finish the card, I just went ahead and added um, a teapot with teacups there and another pattern paper behind it that had that same red. And I think it's fun. Okay, so our next technique is actually going to be trying to uh, tone down a pattern paper. So this pattern paper that I've got here has a lot of stuff going on. And you might be wondering how we're going to tone it down by <laughs> adding more pattern. Well, the answer is with white ink. Um, so I'm, I've already gone ahead and sprayed Pixie Spray on the back of this new Splish Splash, Splish Splash stencil. <laughs> um, so you can see it'll stay in place there. And 
the nice thing about this new stencil, there's uh, three new stencils from the rabbit hole designs and all of them are designed to go side to side, top to bottom. So you can extend it out for slimline cards and that sort of thing. Um, in this case, I'm just going to make an A2 size card. But once I adhere the stencil in place, I'm going to come in with some white pigment ink and this ink will dry back a bit. So it's going to be soft. But you can see when we put more pattern on there, it just kind of hides or tones down the pattern behind it. And you can see on my finished card, it's subtle, but it has definitely toned that pattern paper down a little bit. So I think that's a, a great technique if you've got pattern paper that's too busy. For this technique, the pattern paper is a little boring. <laughs> We've all got some, right? Um, so I want to use this tattoo icon stencil uh, because there are coordinating stamps and I've already off camera um, gone ahead and cut out a focal point that has the same stamp. But this way I can incorporate some of those same images. Now if you don't have a stencil you could do the same thing with small stamps here or a similar thing here. Um, but what I'm going to do is spray the the or spray through the stencil onto a kind of a boring piece of bat, uh, pattern paper there. And I'm using Distress Oxide sprays. You can use pretty much any kind of colored sprays. Um, this one's going to be a little more opaque, but not completely. And you can use like a clear or a transparent one as well, and you would still get a really nice effect. You see that? And I do not want to waste the ink that's on that stencil. So I've got just another piece of that same pattern paper with a little pin drops on or pin dots on it. And I'm flipping my stencil over on top of it and then just sticking a piece of scrap paper just to kind of keep it from getting all over my fingers. And I'm rubbing it all around and you'll see in a second here we've got uh, the transfer of ink there too. Now I didn't turn that one into a card but I'm going to save it for later. And you can see the first piece I just used it for the background on the card and the little dots come through and it's just a neat neat way to actually incorporate that pattern paper that's been sitting in my stash forever. Okay, so for the next technique, this pattern paper is it's boring. <laughs> I don't know why I have it. I think it came in a pack with a bunch of other patterns and I like some of the other ones and not that one. But I want to use this new back alley stencil to make bricks and that that beigey brown color is a great color for the mortar between the bricks. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to uh, dry emboss it where I physically raise the paper through the stencil. So I've got my squishy pad there. Every machine's different, so you're going to need to follow the directions. Uh, but what you want to do is make sure that the squishy pad is underneath your paper and that the stencil is on top. So when you run it through your die cutting machine, you'll be able to have the machine push the paper up through the stencil. And then without moving the stencil, once you get it out, um, you're going to just come back in and tape it down here um, so that the, the bricks stay in the right place there. And it's hard to tell at this point, but the, the brick pattern is embossed and pushed up through, physically raised. But I want to come in and add color too. So I'm using little uh, blender brushes. These are from iCrafter. They're the eye blending or eye blender brushes. Um, and they're actually brushes, not foam. So they're nice and they're tiny. So they're great for using multiple colors. If you want multiple colors, this is the way to go. If you want a one big solid color, use a bigger brush. Um, so I'm coming in with three different colors of ink here and I'm just going to kind of just go through and, and stencil on there. And then I've got a piece of heavy doodle memo tape. This stuff is fantastic if you do not want to get ink all over your fingers. And notice that the sticky side is stuck to my fingers. And that way I can touch the stencil and move it around and hold it in place and make sure nothing shifts. Um, and I can also kind of switch colors there. Now these little blender brushes are really cool too because they're color coded. So I can just, you know, go from red to orange and not really have to clean off the brushes in between. And once I've got the different colors there, um, before I actually pull the stencil off, I want to add a splattering of black ink 
I just, I like the way that this looks. It gives you a little more depth and dimension. So I squished a little bit of the black stamp pad there. That's the black soot distress oxide. Um, and I just spritzed out a little bit of water, mixed it up, and then I can splatter it with my paintbrush. And I'll do that before I remove the stencil. And then the reveal, my favorite part. <laughs> Um, it's hard to see on camera, but the texture is actually raised and in person it shows up a lot. And from, in fact, from the back, you'll be able to see the raised texture a little bit more on camera, but it really looks cool. It looks just like a brick wall. And I think you can maybe see the texture a little bit better there, but it's awesome. So I went ahead and made a card with it real quick, just something quick and easy. I like that marquee sign there. It's kind of a masculine card, but I added a couple of gems to dress it up a bit. Okay, for the next technique, this is another floral pattern. It's a little bit large for cards, maybe a little too busy. And I wanted to kind of incorporate it and make it a winter card. Um, so I wanted to use these snowflakes in the, I think it's called Light, light Me Up or Light It Up um, stencil there. Um, but if I just put them onto blue paper, it would be kind of boring. So the pattern paper, even though it's a floral, it's blue on blue, so tone on tone, um, and it's gonna have some texture to it and some, just some, some interest. Um, it's not exactly a winter scene, but after I stencil on a bunch of snowflakes, it will be. Uh, so I'm using a lightweight texture paste here. This stuff dries very quickly. I really like this one. And I'm using some of my masking tape just to kind of mask off the edges there. So I'm only applying uh, the texture paste to the specific snowflakes that I want. And I'll move it around and give myself a full background. If you are doing this with a different stencil where it's already a whole pattern of snowflakes, then you don't have to do that part. But this one, I like the size and the style of these snowflakes. So once I've got those all on there, you can see we've got a nice raised texture. And then the interest of the floral background behind it, it just kind of adds something to it. But to kind of pull in that white, I'm bringing my splatter box back in and I'm going to go ahead and splatter on some Copic white. This is opaque. It works really nice for this type of thing. Um, so I'm just going to just grab a little bit. It's, it's pretty thick. It's like a paste almost. Um, and then I'm going to spritz just a little bit of water, just a tiny bit, because I don't want to thin it out too much. If you thin it out, then it's not very opaque, but like, it's almost one to one as far as dropping goes or as far as the ratio goes. Um, so then I came in and splattered on white splatter. This stuff does clean up very easy. So if you accidentally get it on your desk um, or too deep in your paintbrush, it's not a big deal. It does clean up. And then we'll let that dry and turn it into a card. I think it turned out really cool. It really looks kind of like a, an interesting snowy back, background there now. And so I just added let it snow. And I used that, a darker marker to color the background and then embossed my sentiment on top there. A couple gems, easy peasy. Okay, so here's another piece of pattern paper where the floral is kind of big. It, it just, you don't really get enough pattern from it um, or, or an, you can't really tell what it is when you cut it down. So I wanted to incorporate, again, more pattern here. And this time I wanted to add some gold to it. So I've got Metallics gel here. This stuff is really pretty. And I've gone ahead and cut my pattern paper down to the size that I wanted for my card. And I'm just gonna tape it in place. You could also use the Pixie spray here again, um, but I just grabbed the tape because I had it handy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and spread some of that gold gel in place. And I'm not covering my whole background. You do not have to add stenciling to your whole background. I, I, it's one of the things that I really like to do is just, just partially stencil on an area. And then in a second, we'll do the reveal here, but you can see I haven't gone all the way to the top right or the bottom left corners there my favorite part. <laughs> um, and this gel actually does leave um, a lot of texture. It's raised, so it's really neat. Um, I'm not going to remove the masking tape at this point until it's completely dry because I don't want to 
smear it or smudge it. So I let it dry with the tape in place. And then I went ahead and turned it into a card. And that gold just really adds even more and it, it's kind of fun. So I really like the way that one turned out. Lots of shimmer. All right, and then for our next one, we are going to actually use the new Weird Science stencil. This one also, you can line up. So it'll match perfectly from top to bottom or left to right. And so you can make an infinitely large piece. And I'm going to turn this one into a slim line. Uh, I didn't realize it at first. At first I thought I would just make a regular size card, but then I decided l this paper, the, the book page here, is large enough to make a slim line, and I enjoy making those. So I will go ahead and ink blend the background, and I'm using three shades of green ink, but I'm only using the softer two for the background. And I'm just kind of splotchily adding it. I don't want it everywhere, although depending on the look you're going for, you could make a nice smooth blend on the whole entire background. I just wanted some coverage so that there's a light green base to start. And then I'm going to go ahead and tape down the stencil and I'll start stenciling ink through it. And this time I'm going to use the darker two shades. So the same, even though that medium shade there I used it for part of the background. I'm also going to use it again for the stencil and it'll come through. Don't worry. But I'll just go ahead and blend it on kind of randomly. I am using a bigger brush because I'm going to do a whole big piece here and I don't want little tiny areas. I want big areas. And again, that memo tape keeps the ink off my fingers while I'm holding it down and blending. And you can see when I come in with my darkest green that I've got a variation of color there. And that just adds more interest. Um, I will caution you if you're using book pages to, you know, keep the subject matter in mind with the recipients. You wouldn't necessarily want to use a horror novel or a really graphic romance novel for kids' backgrounds. <laughs> so, you know, just, just kind of keep that in mind. <laughs> It's amazing what young kids can actually read. <laughs> um, but this one is financial information, so nobody will ever be offended by it. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to come in here and finish it up. And you'll notice that I was able to just line this up. Um, and I I wasn't trying to get a like I said, a super smooth, perfect background, but this stencil does line up perfectly and it meets up top to bottom and left to right without an issue. So you can just continue that pattern in any direction. All three of the, the new stencils from the rabbit hole designs actually do that. I think moving forward, they're going to try to keep that going, um, which I think is a really neat feature. So you can see we've got more interest here. And then... I think I'm going to splatter on, yeah, um, I'm going to splatter on a little more ink. So I've got my darkest green and I'm just doing the same thing I did with the, the black ink and the Copic white, just kind of thin it out with a spritz of water and splatter it onto the background with a paintbrush. And then that's just going to add even more dots and character there. I really like the way this background turned out. It, it excited me, so now I've got the whole book on my desk so that I can tear out more pages. <laughs> so let me show you my finished card here. I went ahead and embossed my sentiment right onto the paper before I stuck it down and added that cute little kitty and some gems to it. Let's take a quick look back at the different cards that we made today. The first technique was silver embossing powder onto the background. That just brought the scale down, um, and it's nice because there's no dry time. For the next card, we used white pigment ink to tone down the pattern. For the third card, we added distress spray to add more pattern. Uh, for the bricks there, we went ahead and stenciled by raising dry embossing and then um, ink blending on top. For our snowflakes and for the mouse, we added more texture with texture pastes and gel. And then for the last card, I did some ink blending before I ink blended the stencil on top. I've got a blog post with links and all of the information and pictures uh, down below, so feel free to use that as reference. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. And I do have a few more videos here in case you're interested. As always, my friend, thanks for watching.